on students from students from historically marginalized communities, um, whether that be race and ethnicity, um, bisexuality, or um, first generation college students. So we have a pre-transition welcome week uh, program that we offer every year. This is the second year we are doing this in person, so we are excited. Um, and it's called WIC Connected. Um, the purpose of this is to essentially have students get connected. Um, and so, it's a five day overnight program. Uh, it's meant for traditionally marginalized groups. So race, ethnicity, LGBTQIA+, and students who are first generation college students. Um, and what we aim to do is to create a support of friends, um, getting students connected with faculty and staff, um, and just trying to make the, the transition to college as easy and seamless as possible. Um, we typically have right around 30 students. Um, but we are, of course, open to having more. And hopefully this year, uh, we do reach that number. Last year, we had around um, 25 to 30 students. And then we often engage our sophomore students to serve as ambassadors for our first year students. Um, so this year's dates um, are August 21st through August 24th. And so students will move in on Sunday, August 21st, I believe August 20th. Um, they will move it on that Sunday, and then the, we'll have programming throughout the week for the students, um, connecting them with faculty on campus, staff, um, and then, of course, some student ambassadors that we have that went through the program the previous year. This, the program is completely free for students to sign up. Um, it is best to just sign up on the website, and if you do need that hyperlink at the end, I can pop that in the chat so you can read more up on that and sign your student up. Um, but essentially, this will kind of give you a overview. Hey, could you go to the next slide for me, please? Okay, good. Two. Thank you. So this will kind of gives you an oh. overview of what our program entails. Um, and of course, some lovely pictures of the students from last year. Um, a lot of these students will often be engaged in student um, leadership roles in our organizations, um, working in our offices. Um, and then, of course, CJ and I, uh, who also works in the McLean Center, we serve as mentors for the students uh, throughout their time at Wittenberg. Um, so this just gives you a glimpse of the schedule and what it looked like last year, yeah. just to give you an idea of what we aim to do. Um, so Sunday, starting off with move in, um, and then we just keep it light with a welcome dinner and orientation, just making sure the students can get to know each other, they can get to know us, um, and just learn about what they'll be doing for the week. And then Monday starts it off, we'll have some success workshops. So a lot of those workshops will entail time management skills, teaching them how to properly plan, um, helping them engage with um, learning the difference between what it is to be a college student versus a high school student, um, and then having a very authentic conversation of what it is like to be a marginalized student at a predominantly white institution. And that is led by the students. Um, most of the success workshops are led by the students um, because we find it is easier for them to just relate to the students and you know tell them what they've learned in their first year at Wittenberg. Um, and so moving on, we have um, some alumni get togethers. This year we'll have an ice cream social. So students will get to engage with different alumni um, and start to build relationships. So that way throughout their time there, they can have strong connections um, and potential mentors on the network um, or the um, alumni side as well. Um, and then last year, we tried to do a trip to Cincinnati. Of course, COVID did not allow that to happen, but hopefully this year we'll make that happen um, or something more local, maybe in the Dayton area. Um, but we always do um, help students venture out in the local Springfield area. Last year, we took a walk to a coffee shop um, and made sure that they are familiar with what's around them in their own community. Um, so that way, you know, when school starts, they're not, um, they're not looking for different things to do. They already know um, where to go. Um, and then, of course, we have a closing dinner where we just kind of reflect on what we've done and then help them uh, prep themselves for Welcome Week, which be begins immediately um, that following day. So we try to keep the schedule pretty light. Um, I, I like to call it forced fun. <laughs> some things they have to do, some things is for their benefit, um, but we do leave a little bit of downtime. So that way, if students need to you know, visit the bookstore or go have conversations with financial aid or accounting um, or housing. So we do leave a little bit of room for, uh, for that. Um, students do get to move in to their fall room assignment. So, um, you know, they won't have to hop around along campus. All meals will be covered. Um, and so one thing we also found, 
from last year is that these students oftentimes are helping the new students, um, the other first year students during welcome week, you know, hey, you know, uh, we purposely place our schedules and our workshops in what? different buildings on campus. So that way students can look and say, oh, hey, you know, we have this workshop over in Blair Hall. Oh, I know where that is. Let me walk you over. So, you know, it helps them go in, you know, with less anxiety and, and a little bit of ease. And so they in turn help their other first year students um, kind of have that same easy transition as well. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to email um, our WIT diversity email. I'll pop my information in the chat a little bit um, later if you all do have questions. And of course, we are here all day. So if you have questions, just let us know. Thanks, Debbie. And then I'm going to give it over to Christina, who's going to talk about move in. Oh, Christina, you're muted. Still muted. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, everyone. So uh, for move-in day, which is um, Thursday, August 25th, um, we have some instructions for you. Essentially, your student will receive an email with their move-in time and all the things that they need to do to get prepared for move-in day. Um, the email will include, uh, you know, uh, where they should go and the packing information. So please make sure you're paying attention to the packing list. There is a list of items on the packing list that are not permitted in the halls. Um, you can also find this on our website. Some examples include, um, you know, candles, plug-in air fresheners is a big one. That's um, something that's not allowed here because there is a heating element in there and there's not an auto shut off feature for uh, several of those plugins. So please keep that in mind. Um, air fryers, and then I also wanted to mention the students really love these very thin LED light strips that go up around the top of their rooms and, you know, make their rooms glow. You would not believe the amount of people that caused damage to their, their rooms this year that we unfortunately had to charge damage billing for. So we really recommend that they don't get those because, you know, they just really pop off the paint in the walls. Um, your students should also bring a photo ID with them. And then we will have move-in helpers um, on that day of move-in day, August 25th, from 9 a.m. to noon at each residence hall. You are permitted to still move in after that, but if you want help from student leaders on campus, um, that, that is the time frame. And we will be assigning you a move-in time during that time frame. If it doesn't work for you, you need to come a little bit later, um, that's okay. But aiming for that is probably the most helpful for you. Um, make sure you're following the move-in maps and um, you're unloading your vehicle and then you will be moving, you'll, you'll be moving to a larger lot somewhere else on campus. And most importantly, um, when you are packing your, your students things, make sure each item that in, you know, like in a suitcase or in a box or in a bag has your student's name, their hall and their room number on it. And that's information that they can find in their housing portal when they sign in, that's on the very first page. Okay. We did get a question about move-in. So will students have help with move-in if they elect to participate in success, work, work, success workshops week on August 21st? Do they move in at a specific time? And so that's gonna vary. Um, so when it comes to the move-in helpers on those days, there might be some students that are already here that are gonna be assisting. So they might be helping out. It just depends on the program that your student is signing up with. And then as it comes to specific times, that information will be sent out um, with that that uh, direct information. So if you're coming in for WIT Connected, um, the diversity office, office will be sending that information. If your student's an athlete, um, that information will go with the athletic program. So it will vary. Um, so we don't wanna uh, say specific information because it could confuse other individuals, um, but just know that it will be communicated via your student's email. Once again, I'll say that again, your student's Wittenberg email. It's going to be really important that they're checking that um, constantly. And so I would say, and go ahead and make this a best practice for them now, um, check it once in the morning, once in the evening, and maybe uh, another time at lunch. And so it's going to be really important that your student checks their Wittenberg email at least three times a day. 
Also, the um, when students are moving in early for like WIC Connected or for athletics, um, there's a lot less people. And so, you know, they're able to move in a lot more slowly and less stressed. So th it's also that the reason the big move in day, there's so many helpers is because there's so much hubbub. So keep that in mind. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is the residential experience at Wittenberg and kind of why we do what we do. So the first two years we have students living in the residence halls and there are um, RAs there and it's the, the purpose of this is to help them gain some independent living skills because for their junior and senior year we then invite them to live in what we call the Wittenbergs which, is, which are you know apartments and houses that surround Wittenberg that give them a more independent living style getting them ready to potentially rent an apartment or you know get their own living space after they leave college. So we want to promote those um, living skills that they need. The, the problem solving, when should they go to bed? How, you know, how do they motivate themselves to get up for class? Stuff like that. Um, then we provide support and connection through formal and formal and informal means. So formal means would be like RA programs. Um, and what that means is when an RA says, okay, we're all going to get together and do a canvas night, or we're going to have a ping pong tournament or watch the big football game together, make bracelets, stuff like that, that your students should absolutely come to those programs. And that way they can meet friends and, you know, uh, get connected to the campus even more. Some informal ways are when students are hanging around um, in the residence halls and lobbies and um, they're like, hey, let's all get dinner together or maybe let's attend a program at the McLean Center or um, a program that uh, student involvement has put together like a hypnotist or a comedian. Those are things that are a little bit more informal. And so we were say, hey, let's go together that sort of thing. And then finally, one of the things that's very important is that students um, see challenges as an opportunity for skill development. So what we mean by that is, um, you know, when there's a roommate conflict, how are they handling this? Because later on in life, when they get a big kid job, um, they need to be able to handle these conflicts in a, you know, in a professional and calm manner. And this is a great place to start. I love sports, practicing sports man. This is nice. <laughs> um, also, the, there like are other things me. that happen that, that we talk me. about in the halls, like community standards. So, you know, when students are leaving, maybe a lot of hair in the drains, in the showers, we get together for a floor meeting and say, hey, let's not do this, that this is a shared space that we all need to respect. So those are the kind of skills that we're talking about. One of the other ways that we want them to think about challenges is, you know, let's say we're talking about a roommate conflict. The first thing we want them to do is to address that with their roommate early and, you know, have that communication, set those boundaries early. So something you can ask your student is say, hey, have you mentioned this to your roommate? And if they're worried about that, um, you can always say, have, have, they, have they talked to their RA? Have you talked to your RA? Have you talked to the area coordinator, which is the professional staff member that lives in the building and oversees the RAs? Those are some easy ways for you to help your students solve their own, you know, their own challenges. So that's all what we're trying to have happen with the residential experience here at WIT. Thanks, Christina. I'll note this, that Christina also made pancakes for the residents last year. Uh, they were really good. Every time the students talked about them, they just kept hyping up Christina. So we know that Christina can make pancakes. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Christina, talk about the residential experience and move in. Once again, more information about move in will be sent to your students Wittenberg email um, as we get closer. Um, and now we're going to go into what's going to be happening during uh, Welcome Week. So getting engaged with campus. So uh, Welcome Week starts with move in. Uh, we will have faculty, staff uh, and students that will be assisting with the move in process. It's going to be great. It's going to be um, relatively hot outside. We've already looked at the weather. It's going to be typical Midwest. And so um, please, rec I recommend that to hydrate, bring water. We will have hydration stations um, during move in. We will also have some times for like open houses. Um, so if you're 
like wondering like, okay, we just moved in the student, like what do we do now? There are some open houses with offices, like our financial aid space will be open. We will also have our honors, uh, honors house will be open. The McLean Center will be open. Uh, alumni house will be open. And so these various offices will be updated as we move forward, um, getting some things confirmed for Welcome Week. Um, with that, so you're able to go out and about into the Wittenberg area. You could also go into Springfield uh, in between that move in time as well. So that way you can get some food there's some great spaces that we'll put on the website where you recommend to eat. Cohatch is by far my fav favorite one. Subtle plug there. Recommend the painted taco. Um, but in some, uh, as we continue on with uh, Welcome Week, students will be put into small groups. These small groups are called what we uh, are called tiger teams. And so the tiger team will have leaders, upperclassmen that are trained. Um, they'll actually be coming in. The tiger team individuals will be here a week beforehand getting trained by the student involvement office on getting uh, students engaged, talking about activities that they're going to be doing, getting students hyped uh, for the upcoming year. It's going to be a great time where we're really ensuring that our, your student are getting acclimated to the resources and, get, and getting engaged with their peers. Um, additionally, I'm I'm going to put in the welcome week schedule link and so this is a uh our link will be updated constantly as we get things confirmed and so just some quick things that will be happening um, after move in like i said some of those open houses will be coming up we'll have a new student and family reception starting at 2 30 and that's going to be a welcome some welcome remarks from the pres uh, president franson um, from Dr. Gill, we'll also have from our interim provost. And so there'll be some general things that we'll be giving some information to you and your student. Additionally, um, we'll have some time for after that, for that, uh, for students to depart, well, for you as family members to depart. So once again, it, it's going to be a time for you to depart. It will be time for you to say your see your laters, uh, not your goodbyes, because you're going to see them again. You're going to have an opportunity to see them during fa Parent and Family Weekend, which I'll give that date to you all later on. Uh, but then followed by that, they will be connecting with their peers. They'll be with their Tiger Team individuals. They're going to be meeting with their residence halls. Um, we're also going to have a hypnotist that night. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the schedule, um, because that's uh, up to date and it's going to be fun times for your students to get connected to the resources. Hey Jay, there's a yes. question. This is Linda. Yes. Uh, it says, will Welcome Week work around athlete schedules or will athletes need to possibly miss sports activities to attend their Welcome Week group? Or basically, how do the coaches operate with that? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Linda, for stopping me for that. Um, so we've been already working with the coaches on what things they need, to, what uh, athletic students need to be participating with Welcome Week. So there's some general requirements like Title IX and compliance that they have to have certain trainings. There's also times for them to connect with their student, with their, uh, with their peers that are both athletes and not athletes. Uh, we really want to ensure that our athletes are connecting with non-athletes because they want to come to the games. And so we've already communicated that with the coaches. They have that the schedule and they know when to connect uh, with their students or their student athletes in and outside of Welcome Week. And I just want to add, sorry Jay, uh, no, just want to add for WIC Connected because we also kind of come up with that um, kind of overlap with our student athletes. Um, it is possible for them to still fully engage. We leave it up to the student to decide um, you know, to communicate with the coaches, hey, I've signed up for multiple programs, um, and just making sure that they are able to balance when they do have free time, that they oftentimes can come to the programs that we have. Um, so, of course, it's not uncommon for things to overlap, but um, at least for WIC Connected, we like to leave it up to the student to communicate that with both us and the coaches, just to make sure that they're not missing, um, you know, practice or training schedules, but maybe they do lunch with us instead of lunch with their team since they've been training with them. Um, and oftentimes it's, it's a fairly easy uh, balance between the two. Thanks, Debbie. And then I do see a, a question from Jennifer about uh, commuter students. Commuter students will already be put into their uh, group, their small group, their Tiger team, because it's actually based off their first year seminar course. And so when our commuter students and then our, our on-campus students will be coming together in that space, they'll become um, in those one group. So they'll connect with one another with people that are also commuters and non-commuters as well. Um, hopefully, Jennifer, that answered your question, but all kinds of students will get it being engaged within their small group conversations. 
Um, additionally, so some general welcome week uh, tips is to wear comfortable shoes, encourage your students to do so. There will be a lot of movement around campus. Additionally, to stay hydrated. Uh, during destination wit slash orientation, we uh, passed out free water bottles. If your student did not get a water bottle from us, please come, uh, we'll have those provided for your students during welcome week, uh, along with uh, some additional hydration stations. And then of course is to make connections. Talk to your students about getting outside of their comfort zone. Um, and then with that, oh, yes. Uh, talk with your students about getting the, uh, making connections and getting them outside of that comfort zone. Um, and then I see that we have another question. So I see I submitted my questions when I registered this morning. Would they be addressed or was I too late for that? Um, iPad uh, 5 golf free. Um, I do not know what questions were submitted, but if Linda, if you can help out with that as I proceed on with the presentation and hopefully uh, iPad 5, we can get those uh, answered for you. I'm going to proceed on real quick. And so during um, our first week at Wittenberg, we will have various programs to do it throughout the week from our involvement fair. We will also have um, scheduled events. We'll also encourage students to just go out and connect either in post 95. They can also connect out with their uh, first year with their FYS course individuals and their uh, and their fellow uh, peers. We also will encourage students to attend those programs, as I mentioned, with their uh, group. We'll also have Labor Day weekend programming. That's gonna be sponsored by Union Board, also RHA, which RHA is our Residential Hall Association. Um, that is our advocacy, advocacy group for our residential students. Um, if your students are wondering like, hey, um, I'm not seeing anything to do, we do have a campus events calendar that is constantly being up to date. Uh, all the time. And so I just put the link into the chat. And so this is here for your student and yourself to see what's going on. We did just add this feature where your student could actually add it to their calendar. Um, it goes directly to Outlook. And so uh, students can get reminders about this, however they wish to get those reminders. We also encourage students to follow our what's happening on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and of course, parents and families, you're also encouraged to follow that as well. So you know what is happening here at Wittenberg. And then proceeding on. And so some additional events, I wanted to go ahead and provide you with these dates. And so our welcome back bash, which is a block party feel for our incoming students. So they are have the opportunity to um, have various activities that will be going on from blow up activities. We're going to have hopefully a live band that's going to be there. We're getting some things worked out with them. Uh, we'll also have our wet gear bingo, which is sponsored by union board. Um, this will be free items. And so students will be able to get free food, free wet gear at uh, wet gear bingo. We'll also have our involvement fair and Invo the involvement fair is similar to, I always explain it like the movie pitch perfect, where one of the characters is walking around the, the quad of their college and that finding the different groups. And so that's how I associate it with it. And so students will be able to go around, connect with their peers, see what organizations they wanna get involved with. And also some campus departments will, will be in attendance as well. We we'll also have our Wit Late Night. These are traditional events. So Wit Late Night is once a month. Um, we give out uh, giveaways every single time. And so that is typically on a weekend. And so it's gonna be from like a Friday to Saturday night, one of those, it just depends on the month. And it usually starts at 9 p.m. It ends around like midnight. Um, some things that we've done is bring in some concerts. We've also have done uh, some, um, Oh, I'm blanking on what we've brought some inflatables and we've had some other activities that we've done too that's all sponsored by students. Uh, we'll also have our uh, Greek Life Carnival and that's an uh, opportunity for incoming students to learn more about our fraternity and sorority communities. They'll have uh, games that are similar to carnival games uh, from like the, one of our groups is going to be diving for ducks and whatnot. Uh, it, that's going to be really interesting. I'm going to be chatting with him about that a little bit more in detail, uh, but we'll also have some bobbing for apples. It's going to be a good little time. We're working with our Greek community to get some fun activities for the students to, uh, to come together and learn about the fraternity and sorority community. Another event is W Day. Uh, that is a staple event here at Wittenberg it, that is sponsored by Student Senate, and there will be like zip lines and free giveaways like shirts and food. Last year we brought Raising Cane, so we'll probably be bringing them again because that's a popular food item. And then of course, 
uh, homecoming and family weekend. So go ahead and save the date for, for uh, Friday, September 30th through uh, Sunday, October 2nd. More information about that will be sent out to your students and we'll put on what's happening as well. We'll have registration links for uh, parent and family weekend. And then of course we have over 60 plus student organizations that your student can get involved with and all of our registered student organizations will be at that involvement fair. Other than that, that's the information that we have for y'all. And then Linda, I see hey, the questions. Yes, yeah. I have the questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask those questions and you all can answer whoever it is fitting to uh, answer the particular questions. So the first one is is how much is the rental of the micro fridge? That is a great question. I believe it's 175. I'm going to look that up right now this second. so I can answer that. Um, why don't we move on to the next question and I'll put it in the chat how much it is exactly. Sure. And then it's also about micro fridges. Are roommates allowed to each rent their own micro fridge, meaning two micro fridges in one room? Unfortunately, no, just uh, one micro fridge per room. It's a voltage issue with the residence halls. Great. Um, can a roommate rent a micro fridge and the other just rent a regular dorm size cube fridge that would maybe not? Yeah, unfortunately, no, just one fridge per room, unless it's a triple or a quad, but one fridge per two students, essentially. All right. Um, another question is, um, there are no storage rooms for luggage, correct? Or does it depend okay. on the dorm? We don't have any storage spaces available, unfortunately. Okay. And are there room, are there mirrors in the rooms? Yes, I believe each room does have a mirror. Great. Um, we went over the process of how to learn more about move-in time and the procedures for moving in um, in the presentation. So that question was answered. And then there's one about um, mobility. So somebody's going to have um, limited mobility when their daughter's moving into Ferncliff third floor. Will there be a place she can stay that's out of the way, or he, um, preferably air conditioned? And will, will there be help for her? Um, <clears throat> that's a great question. I know we are still working on the details of everything that's happening with um, move-in day. So, I mean, I think that, you know, being a small school, that's something we can definitely um, accommodate and reach out to that person specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so I would imagine, you know, the student union would be a good place that's air conditioned. The alumni house. Right, the alumni house. Which so, is yeah. close to Ferncliff. Right, right. Um, so um, is your email in the, or could you just throw your I email put it in, in the chat that that person might be able to just email you directly about that? Yes, absolutely. I will do Perfect. That. Um, another question maybe came up here in the chat. What's the process to rent a micro fridge combo? There's a website, it's um, www.bedloft.com. And when you go on there, it's actually pretty easy. You just fill in the, um, the different things, you know, Whitburg University and when you're, where you're living and it like takes you through the steps. So it's, it's pretty simple. Great. Um, Jenny, I see your question. Yes, freshmen are permitted to have a car on campus. Here's then, one. What size beds are in the single rooms? There, all the beds are uh, twin extra long. So check out those twin sheets and make sure that you're getting the XLs. I think there's two questions in the chat we jumped over. Mm -hmm. um, one is asking if dorms give microwaves in common areas and are there microwaves in the student center or cafeteria? 
So each residence hall does have a microwave in a common area, <clears throat> but generally it's only about one for the building at this at this point. So um, generally one for about 150 students. So keep that in mind. That's that's the benefit of the micro fridge is that they can have a microwave in their room. And that is the only way to have a microwave in your room is with the micro fridge because of the voltage issue once, once again. Here's a plug as well. In the McLean Center, we have a full kitchen. And so students are able to either reserve the space if they say they want to do dinner um, or kind of have lunch to themselves of some kind, or they can just walk in and use the space. Um, we do ask that they clean up after themselves, of course, um, but we do have like a full fridge, um, a microwave, um, and a, a stove there as well. And then in our commuter lounge, which is downstairs in our student center, we do also, we have a large scale fridge. Um, and then we also have a microwave in there as well. In the student involvement office, we also have a microwave that we do not mind that students come and use. There was a second part of the question about micro fridges. They will mm -hmm. be delivered to the rooms. I wanted to make sure I, I answered that. And yeah, that's per school year, uh, the cost. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I'm not, do we answer the one about cars on campus? Students are allowed to have cars on campus. I freshmen too, yeah. I think that's all the questions from the chat. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through the chat to make sure we've done everything. Are they able to bring a portable dishwasher since the only way to do dishes in the bathroom sink from what I am told? So some residence halls have sinks where you can do dishes like in a common mm -hmm. area. Um, some, the students do do it in, in the bathroom. Um, as far as a portable dishwasher is concerned, um, I am not quite sure that's, a great, no one's ever asked me that. So um, I will find that out. Again, you can send me um, an email or to housing at Wittenberg or my, my own, and um, I can find out about that. Mm -hmm. Christina, we also did get a message too about are students able to remove a bed if they're in a single? So if there's two beds in there, can they remove one of them? No, they all the furniture that is in the room has to stay in there. What I recommend is make your student have a full-size bed. Um, a lot of the students end up doing that if they have two beds. Um, yes, and it's they love one that. single student. Mm -hmm. And lots of students actually who do have singles, they're like, oh, there's only one bed in here. Can I get a second bed? Because they want to make a big giant super mm -hmm. bed. Um, but yeah, they can also disassemble most of the beds and then, you know, store it somewhere in the room or double mattress. I've seen that also. Um, mm -hmm. with, with that students do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Can you bring a rug for your dorm room? And if so, what is the typical size? I know the answer is yes for bringing the rug. And I think I would say the sizes probably depend on the residence hall um, or most likely definitely depend on the residence hall. And those room sizes, I believe, Christina, are on the website. Is that correct? Yes, so for most of the, um, the halls, there are room dimensions on the website for the floor plans. Unfortunately, some, for new hall, there is not because every single one of those rooms is a different size, sadly. Um, so we do not have that information, but um, yes, about the, the rugs. Mm -hmm. um, do I recommend renting the loft system? Um, Yes and no. I feel that some students really enjoy the extra, extra space that the loft gives them underneath their bed. And then I have also seen some students that get sick of it and they, you know, don't want to climb up so high to, to get to their bed and end up just disassembling it. So I, I think it's really, you know, you and your student knowing what's what they can tolerate and what's best for them. Great. Any other questions? Subtle uh, tip for you all as parents is to, and I know that 
uh, student involvement staff, we mentioned this during Destination WIT, but it's really going to be important that you encourage your students to stay on campus um, and not go home for the first few weeks. That's really going to be to ensure that your student is getting acclimated to the resources, getting connected with their peers as well. And we're, we're going to make sure that they're going to have a good time, be successful, and then encourage them to come chat with staff. Like we are here for your student and we want to ensure your student's success. Oh, I think I also see Devorah's mom's question on here about, hi, <laughs> um, she's the iPad 5. Um, I spoke with her at orientation a couple of times I'm about the email. Yes, her email is based on Outlook. So it's best to download the Outlook email app onto her phone. That's the absolute best way to do it. Um, and then if she's still struggling, she should, from her personal email, she can email solutions at wittenberg.edu and they should also be able to help her. Um, they, I believe they also have a phone number on the website and you can also always call me and I can, you know, take her through step-by-step, step, so. The other thing I've seen done with the extra bed in a room is they lower it all the, all the way or close to all the way down the, the actual mattress in the, in the headboard and footboard slots mm -hmm. and bring some throw pillows and actually make kind of a couch out of it. So that's something that I thought was pretty ingenious. Um, You're absolutely right, Linda. I've seen that too. Yeah. Um, well, I guess what I'd like to say is if anybody has any questions, as you've known from your Wittenberg experience thus far, I hope, is that we will all be able to answer any questions you have should you just shoot us an email. Um, we also hope that you tune in for the next uh, parent engagement session and I'll let Jade plug that. Um, Linda, do you know where this recording will be available? Uh, yeah, the recording is going to be placed out. Um, let's pick a place. Um, I guess it makes sense to be out on the student involvement page, but we will also send the recording to your student or a link to the recording to your student in email so that they can um, access that and send it on to you all. Okay. Um, all, all questions about Res Life, the best email for you to email is housing at wittenberg.edu. Um, I can access that, the director can access that, and we, you know, generally answer it pretty quickly. You can, you know, obviously email me personally, but we also all check the housing one, so. Well, thank you all so much. All right. Thank you so much. We really look forward to having you on campus, your students on campus. We will make um, move in a very smooth um, experience for everybody. So please um, look for us as you're moving in and there will be many hands to make the uh, work a light load so that you can get to the actual moving in and placement of things in the room. We'll, we'll get it to the room, but we'll uh, have you in the room so that you can enjoy time with your student as they get um, everything, as I call, set up and decorated. So we hope you enjoyed the session. And like I said, any other questions, send us an email. Have a great day, everybody. Yes, thank you all. Have a good one. Thank you. Linda, are we